Bam! Watch this video and you might save a buck because you can decide if you can live with the power of the budget flat tap of camshaft versus the bucks up roller cam. a buzzsaw. Seven yeah. grand. I know That's you awesome. like RPM. Oh man, I love it. Don't you love it when guys say they like the 327s because they rev higher? Yeah, I know. <laughs> we have 400 inches here that just went and goes 7,000 RPM. With the hydraulic the flat tap of yeah. all things. So here's our baseline with the flat tap at camshaft. It made 486.5 pound feet of torque. And up here in the horsepower, it's really flat through here. It's making a range of 494 to 496 horsepower, the peak being 496 at 6200. But we're all stoked this thing actually ran cleanly to 7,000 RPM. And it didn't fall over, it rolled right. over Let me ask reasonably. you this, Ryberger. If you were drag racing that, I mean, you wouldn't shift it at the power peak at 62. No. We're, I mean, look at the way it carries all the way to seven. Where oh, yeah. would you shift that thing? At seven. Yeah. Definitely. And then let it fall back down into here. And then you're using all that meat. And this thing's pretty cool because you're launching the thing with like a 3500 stall converter. You're just getting into the torque curve. Or even a clutch. 4,000. Yeah, yeah. good torque right in there. That's pretty good. I like it. I'm, I'm more enthused than I uh, thought I might be. Yeah, me too. We're going to be more enthusiastic when we put the roller in it That's right now. That's a really pretty curve, though. There's no funny stuff with valve control issues or any dips or anything. No. That's a really good looking curve. So that's a happy thing. A roller cam's happier. So are we done? Yeah, let's go install it. Oh, I thought it was like beer time. I'm happy with it. We have to change it. So Steve and I are changing the cam. <laughs> So we have the roller cam all installed now and ready to fire it up. It's gonna make more power, but there's no reason to assume that it would take different ignition timing, right? No, I don't believe And the it. jetting will probably solve itself. Yeah, I mean, we'll take one, one good look at it, but I, th I think the timing is going to be pretty much determined by combustion chamber and dome and, you know, cylinder Sorry. head. Let's look at the overlay of that versus the flat tappet. Our official run with the roller cam, 492.9 pound-feet of torque, 517.5 horsepower. Let's overlay the flat tappet and see how much better it is everywhere in the curve. Oh, know. not as much better down here below 4,300 as I thought That's that what it I was might saying. be. I thought it would diverge. It did. But up here, when you start picking up engine speed above 4,500, look at that. The roller is way we really need better. the additional airflow. So what? Did we deliver the BAM? Bam, really? hydraulic roller. I wanted to be a hydraulic flat tappet guy, but I'm convinced now. Oh, I don't know, I'm gonna go the other way. I was really impressed with that 292 mega cam. I was surprised yeah. it went to 7,000 RPM and it made pretty good power. And it confirmed, I think, my suspicion that like when I was 17 years old and throwing a PAW camshaft in my 383 Mopar, yeah. it might not have been that bad. But the takeaway, I always think of it from like the average muscle car guy's perspective, which is, yeah. we keep saying this, a flat tap of cam, this setup's about 250 bucks for the cam and lifters. If you're gonna go with a roller conversion and the roller lifters and cam and the distributor gear that you might need and the cam button and push rods, closer to a thousand bucks. So you gotta decide if that extra 750 to 800 bucks is really worth it for the project that the average viewer is putting together. And I think most people building an engine to this level, 500 horsepower, probably are not even considering a hydraulic flat tappet to begin with. And some of yeah. them might now go, that wasn't that bad. It depends on who you are. You might be that guy who wants to get the hydraulic roller, spend the money, it might not mean that much to you. Or you might be the bucks down guy who can make Pretty close, you know, same RPM, pretty close to pretty good power and save a bundle. Yeah. So 
I'm usually that guy. I know. <laughs> yeah. Now you like the hydraulic roller better than ever, and I like the hydraulic flat tappet better than ever. Not that I would pick it every time, but I was just more impressed with it than I expected to be. This engine is based on the architecture founded in 1955, and they made these things all the way through 2003 in some vans, and Chevy still sells them as crate engines. The 350, which is what this is, started in 1969. There's a zillion of them. Now let's look at the absolute basic pattern package that we're gonna be running on this show. The engine is a crate motor from a place called First Mate Automotive. I bought it from Summit Racing for 1,399 bucks. I mean, it is basic. Cast pistons, cast crank, minuscule flat tap at camshaft, nothing trick. But for that price, you get everything from the long block, including a camshaft, front cover, oil pan, valve covers, but not the accessories. Let me show you how I package this thing out. Up top, Holly's most affordable and basic carburetor. This is an aluminum version of the 1850, which is a 600 CFM vacuum secondary single feed carburetor. Our intake manifold is a basic low rise dual plane from Speedmaster, that's 152 bucks. The ignition system is an HEI, which GM came out with in, I think, 1974. It means high energy ignition. It has a coil and a module and the trigger and everything right there. That's your whole ignition system, 136 bucks. The Excel 4000 series wires are about 40 bucks. These are Flowtech one and five eighths inch headers for a early Chevelle, 152 bucks. On my left here, I've got the swirl port head that came off of our crate engine. This was used in 91 and earlier Chevy trucks, and basically it's a complete turd. Even though it looks like a Vortec head because it has those center bolt valve covers and stuff, it's not. This is a Vortec head. These were used on 350 Chevys with the L31 designation from 1996 to the year 2000. They were only in trucks and SUVs. And the thing is you can still pick them up in junkyards. That's the great thing about them. There are some drawbacks though. The biggie is that they won't handle a lot of valve lift without machining because the bottom of the retainer hits the top of the valve guide. You can only put about 450 thousandths lift in them before you run into a problem. They also have press in rocker studs just like this swirl port head and you get a lot of valve spring pressure on them, those tend to pop out. So you wanna modify them to have a screw in stud just like this one has been modified. The other thing is you'll often find in the aftermarket heads that they'll put bigger valves in them. Blueprint Engines actually did this set of Vortex for us and they've got a 2.02 inch intake valve instead of the stock 194. The really big deal here though is that the intake port on the Vortec is so much superior than it is on the swirl port. It's ridiculous. And if you look at the chamber, this is your standard smog era garbage bathtub of a combustion chamber. Whereas here on the Vortec, you've got a much nicer heart shaped chamber, more of a modern design. And this is 64 cc's instead of 76. That means that we're gonna take our crate engine from 8.25 to one with the swirl port head to 9.2 to one with the Vortec head. And that is gonna be a really big deal. Next up, you're gonna have to consider your intake manifold if you're changing from a swirl port head or an older one to a Vortec head. Now this is a Speedmaster intake manifold. It is designed to run both the TPI pattern or the classic old school pattern that you'd find in like a 69 Camaro or 74 Monte Carlo. The old school pattern, all of the bolts go in at the same angle. The TPI pattern on this swirl port head is different in the middle, just like it would be on like an 87 TPI Camaro. The Speedmaster intake has adapters to do both, but it won't fit a Vortec head because the Vortec head intake has bolts that go straight up and down, and they also take a different intake gasket for that reason. Now this intake manifold for the classic Classic setup is about 152 bucks. This one for the Vortex, almost 170. So you do need to keep that in mind if you're being budget conscious. Speaking of which, if you don't want to scrounge the junkyards for your Vortec heads, I like a place called Scoggin Dickey. It's a Chevy dealership and they offer a package of brand new heads with all of these upgrades on them. They're 890 bucks, but you can do it much cheaper if you scrounge on your own. And when you do, you're gonna make a whole bunch more power, or at least that's the theory, and we're gonna go find out if it's true right now.
That's a lot of improvement. That's a lot of improvement. <laughs> That's totally worth it. That's way over 100 horsepower. Let's see what it did. Wow. wow! We just made 397 pound-feet of torque at 4,000 RPM and 364.9 horsepower at 5,500. We made 130 horsepower. Look like heroes, huh? That's so uh, hundred and it's like a 50% gain. But See, the thing is, I think there's a ton of guys out there who are dealing with older muscle car V8s and they've got between 400 and 600 horsepower and they don't really want to deal with an electric fuel pump. They don't want the wiring, they don't want the plumbing, they don't want the return line, they don't want the rocket science, they fear it for whatever reason, and they want to run mechanical. I've been that guy. I've also been the guy with a lot of struggles actually trying to make four or 500 horsepower go all the way down the drag strip without running out of fuel. And we're gonna show you exactly that as we test four different mechanical fuel pumps on our little small block Chevy. So there you go. We made a change, removed this 5 16th inch fuel line and installed 3 8 You can see that it's bigger. So we're gonna go test now and find out if it makes a difference in that pump's ability to make flow and pressure. made wow. a difference. Made a little difference. Yeah, it did. I think it made quite a bit of difference. I can't wait to see. Let's pull okay. up the graph. Yep. There you go. <laughs> that is the difference between 5 16 fuel holes in red and 3 8 inch line in black. Dulcich and I were all the time saying, man, people overkill fuel systems. You don't need all that stuff. But the 3 8 line thing, I believe in it more now. Oh, yeah. You I really mean, do need the 3 8 line. Singh is believing with yeah. that. That's the coolest thing I've learned so far today. Whoa, that's pretty good. Yeah, basically started at uh, six seven, spiked up to six eight, and the uh, worst case scenario it was six two, and finished at six four. Let's compare it to the other pumps, though. That's Let's... where I think we're going to really see yeah. the difference is when we compare it to something else. Compared to the Carter Super Pump with the three eighths line. Oh yeah, but you can see the difference of where is this is right around six point eight, and this is right around five and a quarter. Let's they pull still them all look pretty up. flat. Yeah, they're both Pretty decent uh, curves, I think. I think it's going to show that this one has a little less change. Yeah, this is that 120 pump with the uh, smaller line. 5 which it yeah. line. This is the 40-gallon $15 pump. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All over the place, yeah. So really what you're buying with a fuel pump at this point is like consistency of fuel pressure and I guess just capacity, capacity, capacity. capacity trust. Thing. Yeah. Well, let's look at flow. It's probably still flowing the same because at this point the engine is just using what it's using. So there is your volume. I think we had an air bubble there. An air bubble or something like that. Those little turbines are actually super sensitive. All it takes is a little air bubble to give them a, a blip like that. So sometimes there's an anomaly. But let's look at it compared with uh, you know, that 120 gallon the final detest. So this is the 120 gallon yeah. pump with the uh, 3 8 line. It's roughly the same because now we're at the point of it's what the engine is going to use. The engine's use. pulling what it needs to through the carburetor. My opinion is, is this is the right pump out of what we have done with these fuel lines for this engine. I think really if you've got a 300 horsepower engine, it doesn't need this pump. If you've got a 700 horsepower engine, you're going to need this pump right. or something even bigger. So I think it's a matter of demands, but uh, this thing is so much more stable. That really was interesting. It's a test I've never done before. I've never even thought of it before. I so liked it. I think it's pretty cool. I really wanted to be able to walk out of here like the crotchety, naysaying dinosaur and go, you don't need a trick fuel system. I can run 500 horsepower on any fuel pump. <laughs> I really wanted to be that guy. Did. It was I know. kind of why I set up the test. Oh, I know, but you found out you were wrong. I was completely wrong. I can't do it. Why? I actually knew I was going to be wrong, but I was hoping that I was closer to right. How's your persona holding up? 
I'm pretty good. Really? Yeah. But you, I thought for sure you would like be on my side. You'd want to see this turd actually just cranking out the power. Well, I really wanted to see this auto part special replacement style pump perform better. That would be the key. The $15 one would be good. But let's conclude what we think of this one knowing what we know now. I would run this on 400 horsepower all day and not worry about it. If you're on a super tight budget and you're not making super high horsepower, that guy is not too bad. It really isn't bad, but I think when you crest up north of 450 horsepower is when you got to really start paying attention. And I got to be honest, as much as my go-to Carter Super Pump that I used on everything, you know, in the 80s with nitrous or whatever, as good as it did on this, it's good. I now actually believe that there is merit in overkilling your fuel system and getting that 170 gallon per hour unit on your 500 horse motor.